to day two of the 10 days of awe. If you recall from yesterday, we started off our 10 days by talking about Yom Teruah, which is the day of blowing. We also talked about the shofar and how the blowing signifies that we need to repent of our sins and renew ourselves in the Lord. In fact, yesterday, I also gave you the charge to read through scripture and to make reading scripture over the next 10 days a higher priority. And so today we're going to talk about another discipline that we can practice together and that will help us to grow in our commitment to the Lord. But first, I want to talk some about another use of the shofar in scripture. The shofar was commonly used to signify the new reign and the new establishment of a king. And so we read this in Psalm 98, 6, where it says, With trumpets and the sound of a horn, make a joyful noise before the king, the Lord. We're focusing these 10 days on repenting and renewing ourselves in the Lord. And a big piece of this puzzle is recognizing that Jesus is king, that the Lord is king over us. And so this, this Psalm verse, it's, it's, it's especially true when we consider the Messiah's role in our lives. A lot of us, when we come to salvation, we say, Jesus, you can be my savior. You can save me from my sin. But we don't get to the part of making Jesus king or making Jesus Lord over our life. We don't let him really establish his reign. We don't really let him set the rules and set the precedent for our life. Instead, we contain control and we say, no, I'm going to decide where I'm going to go. I'm going to decide what I'm going to do. I'm not going to listen to my savior. I'm not going to make him Lord. And we need both pieces of that puzzle. And so Jesus, in reality, he needs to rule and reign over our lives, over our hearts. Also, Jesus is literally going to return to this earth and establish his reign as the Davidic king over the earth. He's going to come again. And we read this in Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11, where it says, Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed upon him the name that is above every other name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. One of our core values is evangelism. And when we talk about Jesus being Savior and Lord, this is a topic that is, is really central to this theme. This is the extension of what we do in response to Jesus being Savior and Lord. And so as we talk about the 10 days of all, we are reminded of the near second coming of Jesus. We're reminded of his initial sacrifice, but we're also reminded of the reign that he's going to come and establish on earth. But while we have the Lord ruling over our lives, there are so many other people out there who don't. There are so many people that we know that we love who don't know Jesus as their savior and as their king. And so today I wanna to ask the question, are we really practicing evangelism? Are we really caring for the souls of others by metaphorically blowing the shofar and warning them of the near coming reign of our king? It's something that I wanna challenge you with today and, and over the next 10 days, talk to people. Talk to at least one person by the end of today about who Jesus is. Say, look, I have Jesus as king in my life, but one day he's going to be king over everybody's lives, whether they like it or not. And really just make it real. What does Jesus being king mean for you? What does Jesus being savior mean for you? Evangelism is such a, a core, core piece of the 10 days of awe. And so as we discussed earlier, the blowing of the shofar, it serves as an announcement of the establishment of a king's reign. As we reestablish the reign of the Lord over our lives, we are ensuring that he is truly ruling and reigning over every part of our life. And that's what today is about in the 10 days of awe. I can almost promise, I mean, I can almost guarantee you rather that there are areas in your life where you're not letting the Lord rule and reign. And I can say that because there are areas in my life that I'm not letting the Lord rule and reign. Everybody has these areas. And the benefit of recognizing the 10 days of awe every single year is you can step back and reevaluate and say, Lord, where am I not, where am I not letting you have your way? Where are you not king in my life and in my heart? And so today, these are, these are the points that we're reflecting on. Are there any specific areas where you continue to retain control? where you're saying, God, I'm holding on to this and I'm not letting go. Have you truly surrendered every part of your life to the ruling of the Lord? Not just the parts that are easy, not just the parts that you don't really care about, but every single part. Have you truly surrendered it to the Lord?
And I want to read for you in uh, the book of Daniel, verses seven, chapter 7, verses 19 through 14. They reflect on the coming reign of the Lord. And I want to read specifically verse 14 for you, where it says, And to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away. And his kingdom, one that should not be destroyed. On the second day of awe, let us reestablish the kingship of the Lord in our lives. Have a blessed day, and I will see you back tomorrow for day three of the 10 days of awe.